are stories about what happened. It's true. All of it. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Star Wars Canon Library. My name's Brian, and I'm the librarian here at the Canon Library. Where we're keeping all the canon in chronological order for you guys. Um, guys, this is going to be a little bit of a longer video. Um, I haven't done one in the last few weeks, uh, actually several weeks. I've uh, uh, been very busy with work, and and uh, and I'm not going to lie, I got an original Xbox and Knights of the Old Republic's one and two and Jedi Outcast, and that's been all of my time. So, uh, forgive me for the lull in activity. Um, it is because of something Star Wars. Just so you guys know, hopefully that eases the pain a little bit. Um, but guys, uh, as far as this video goes, um, this is kind of, I don't know, this is going to be a, a little bit more, um, I guess kind of a news episode, I guess you could say. Um, uh, I did put on my Facebook yesterday, I was going to do a, uh, a Q&A, um, and tried to do it last night, but got caught up in Knights of the Old Republic, and by the time I remembered it, it was too late. And then today, I'm sorry it's getting out so late, but I, my encoder had to update, and it's just, it's been a mess. So, um, I'm going to be answering some questions at the end of this uh, episode, um, uh, but I'm going to be talking about a few things that have been come, that have come out in the last week or so, um, things that uh, a lot of people have been asking me my opinion on. Um, so, I'm, I'm just going to jump right into it. Um, the first thing that I've got uh, that I'm going to talk about is actually the review for this past week's episode of Rebels. Uh, it was uh, Legacy of Mandalore. Uh, very, very good episode. Um, now, a lot of people really enjoyed the episode before this one, um, Trials of the Dark Saber, with Sabine getting the Dark Saber and everything like that. Um, and I'm and I remember telling everybody that I was kind of getting a little fatigued of the Mandalorian storyline, and and you know a lot of people disagreed with me, which is perfectly okay. Everybody's allowed to you know like what they like, but. Um, this episode fixed that for me. Um, I got Kirsty all caught up on Rebels. She was like four or five episodes behind. So we watched all of those episodes up until we got to the new one. Um, and we watched the new episode and, and I, I loved it. It was a great episode. And I kept telling her even, you know, like the little standalone-ish episodes are getting better and better. Like, um, Warhead, you know, it was all right. I mean, it was, it's better than the puffer pigs and stuff like that. So, um, I really, really, really enjoyed Legacy of Mandalore, um, and I'm interested to see if they just wrote Sabine out of the story completely just, you know, with this episode or, you know, she's not going to have as large a role or, um, you know, what's what's going on or we're going to start getting a lot more Mandalorian stuff um, as Rebels goes along. Um, but, yeah, uh, my opinion of the last episode of Rebels, I loved it. Um, I'm itching to get to the end of this season because I want to see. I know Thrawn's coming out like a badass um, and I know we're getting Obi-Wan and Maul. Um, I'm, I'm really, really excited, uh, and, and I really want to see where the storyline with Ezra and Maul and Kanan and all of them go. Um, but yeah, this this past week's episode was bar none one of my favorites. Um, still my favorite episode of Rebels so far was the end of season two with Ahsoka fighting Vader again, and I just, I, uh, fighting Vader for the first time, I, I love that episode. That is my favorite episode so far, and, and it's, it's, uh, it, that episode sets the bar really high, so it's hard it's hard to come anywhere near that one, but this one gets pretty close. It really does. Um, I did enjoy this episode more than the Trials of the Dark Saber episode. Um, the Trials of the Dark Saber. I mean, yes, we got to see a lot of uh, what makes Sabine Sabine. You know, some of her dark history. Uh, you know, especially when it all starts pouring out all at once. Um, so you get that kind of deep look at Sabine. But then in this episode. Um, you get a little bit more of a glimpse into that, um, and and more of the pain that she carries because of what she's done in her past. So um, I I really enjoyed this episode quite a bit. Um, I'm I'm kind of interested to see, like I said, where the Mandalorian story goes because uh, there are really not a lot to be a lot of Mandalorians to be seen in A New Hope. So I'm kind of wondering if they even get the Mandalorians to help them. The Rebel Alliance gets them to help them. So. Uh, that's my review of the uh, episode of Rebels, Legacy of Mandalore. Um, something else that came out this week uh, that uh, has a lot of people talking uh, is the box art for Force Friday uh, for the uh, Last Jedi toys. Um, and I even tagged Kirsty in this at one point, and she didn't even think it was real at first. She thought it was fan-made, but... Um, <clears throat> 
the picture, this is our first look at uh, Ray, Finn, and Poe. And uh, uh, to be honest, it's, as far as I'm concerned, it's a little underwhelming. Uh, I mean, Poe and Finn look identical as they did in Force Awakens. Uh, the only difference is Ray and her hairstyle. That's it. And, and I find it very amusing that Star Wars fans, and, and I'm guilty of it too, but as Star Wars fans, we can take one picture of somebody and start analyzing the crap out of it to see what the next movie is going to be about. Um, like I saw one comment saying um, something like, uh, Ray's hair is longer, so she must know who her parents are now. What? No. I, that, okay, whatever. But um, we see that she still has Luke Skywalker's lightsaber, uh, Anakin's lightsaber. Um, I'm still hoping that her staff has a lightsaber in it. I'm still hoping, you know, that that uh, is a fact. Um, but, I mean, it's it's a cool picture. Um, somebody noticed, too, in the bottom corner um, where it says from the new film, the, the Last Jedi, if you look in the reflection, it still has the yellow font that says Episode Eight. Um, it's kind of funny. But, um, yeah, this is our first look at, essentially, Rey uh, from Episode Eight. Um, somebody said something about Finn's uh, shirt under the jacket looking like Han Solo's, and it's the same shirt. Poe War at the beginning of uh, Force Awakens, so I don't know if it's just resistance guerrilla fighting, you know, gear or uniform or what, you know. But, but you know, it's it's a cool image. I'm not losing my mind over it. It's 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 neat. Um, I'll lose my mind when we get a trailer. That's what I want to see a trailer. I don't care about these little images. Uh, uh, and speaking of trailer, um, from what I have heard, is that we're getting it at Celebration, as well as like a featurette thing, like a behind the scenes thing. Um, I'm hoping they do the trailer before the featurette. Um, if they don't, that's, I mean, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it, but I'm going to be a little disappointed in Disney. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, this is our first look at, uh, essentially Ray in episode eight. So, uh, I, it's all right. Not bad. Uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about was there's a new novel coming out and you know, here at the Canon library, we are all about the novels and this is what the site is all about right here. The next novel coming out after Thrawn in April is going to be called Inferno Squad. Uh, it comes out on July 25th. It's written by Christy Goldie, uh, Golden, Christy Golden, sorry. Uh, the, uh, the same author who did Dark Disciple. Um, now, from what I've read, uh, this book, uh, that's just a working cover. It's not an actual official cover yet. Uh, but from what I've heard, this book takes place immediately after Rogue One from the Empire's point of view. I guess kind of going into A New Hope, I don't know, um, but I'm very excited to read this book. I cannot wait to get my hands on it. Um, I really, really enjoy Dark Disciple. Um, I, I really like Christy Golden's writing style, um, so I'm, I, I, I cannot wait to get my hands on this book, guys. It comes out on July 25th. Uh, I'm going to be first in line to get this thing. I cannot wait. Um, and uh, to be honest, I'm going to see if I can get a review copy of it. Um, I've been emailing Del Rey. Um, trying to get some review copies so that I can get the reviews out for you guys before the book actually releases. Um, but I promise you, if that happens, there will be no spoilers. But um, speaking of uh, other books being released as well, uh, tomorrow we've got another canon novel being dropped, and it is the third book in the Aftermath series. It is Star Wars Aftermath Empire's End. Um, I'm This comes out tomorrow. I'm itching to get my hands on this book. I cannot wait to finish this trilogy. Um, I did not care that much for the first Aftermath book, but I really, really enjoyed the second one. And from what I've heard so far, the third one is just as good as the second one, if not better. So um, I really want to see the Battle of Jakku take place in this. We've only seen kind of snippets and, you know, the collateral damage of the Battle of Jakku. Um, I, I want to see the actual Battle of Jakku, you know. Um, uh, I just, I, I want to see it. Obviously, like, even when you play Battlefront, um, if you look up in the sky on Jakku, you can see just literally thousands of blaster bolts all at once. It looks like the sky is just sparkling. I mean, it's got to be this massive, massive battle. And obviously, this is where the Empire is essentially in its death throes. So if this book is called Empire's End, it's going to be the Battle of Jakku. I cannot wait to get my hands on this book. I'm dying. Uh, and I, guys, as soon as I get this tomorrow, I will get a review up as soon as possible. I will buzz through this book as quick as I can. And I, I cannot wait to let you guys know my feelings on this book. Um... Now, like I said, I was going to do a few questions, uh, a Q&A kind of thing uh, that uh, I announced on Facebook. Um, 
And guys, if you guys have any questions about Star Wars canon at all, so far we've read all of this stuff. I've got it all in chronological order for you guys. Um, if you guys have any questions for Star Wars canon at all, let me know. Do not hesitate to let me know. You can email us right, where is it, right there at starwarscanonlibrary at gmail.com. Make sure to visit our website. Uh, there's a contact page uh, on there as well if you want to uh, contact us from there. It is www.starwarscanonlibrary.com. Dot com. Um, you can also message us on Facebook, which is where I pulled these comments from, these questions. Uh, it's just simply facebook.com slash Star Wars Canon Library. So uh, I've got three questions that I was going to uh, share with you guys that I was going to answer for you. Uh, so let's just hop right into this. And the first one it actually comes from Richie Tillman. And he wants to know, is the Lego Star Wars TV show canon? No, it is not. Um, if The Lego shows have always been something that were for little kids, um, something that is kind of humorous, more on a family level, um, you know, stuff like that. So Vader's shaking his head, looking down, and just, you know, like, just cartoony behavior is not canon. Um, the Lego Star Wars TV show is not canon. Those characters are not canon. Um, it's just uh, any part of that show is not canon. Um, now, if it was just an animated show and wasn't in the form of Lego and didn't have the little humor bits on the side, you know, like this cartoony shake my head vader instead of brutally killing people then yes it probably would be but at this point it, it is not canon it's not on the canon list and uh to be honest if it was i think i'd have a kind of a hard time watching it getting through it to review it for you guys uh all right so the next question comes from richard J. and this is a little bit of a longer one uh me and richard J. talk quite a bit on uh, facebook uh he's he's actually i've never met the man before in my life i would love to meet richard J. one of these days uh, he's probably laughing his ass off right now watching this. Uh, but uh, he had a question. It was, uh, first off, he said, I hope you've seen this week's Rebels. Love to hear your thoughts on this. I already, I already covered that. Uh, also, if you've seen Rebels Recon in the trailer for the next week's shows, I have not watched those yet. I need to go on and watch the trailers for the next episode. I didn't even think about that until... I saw this, but um, anyway, Jay's question is, he says, however, my question is, if you were at, uh, tasked with writing an episode of Rebels where Maul and Obi-Wan square off, how would you do it? I would personally like to hear everyone's thoughts on this. Uh, okay, I'm kind of torn on this because me and Jay were talking one day and he had the idea of Maul coming up and asking Obi-Wan for his help. And... I really, as much as I love that idea, and as much as a twist, as much as of a twist that would be, and as cool as that would be, I don't see them going that route. Um, to be completely honest, if I was in charge of it, God, I don't know. I mean, it's got, if, if those two go head to head, Maul's not walking out of it alive. There's no way. Okay, Maul is still pissed off at Obi-Wan for cutting his ass in half and Phantom Menace on Naboo and sending him down the garbage chute. That's, that's seriously, that, that's his entire vengeance right now. Maul's anger is the only thing that kept him alive, and, you know, all those years on uh, what the, the planet was like, Lethal Minor, uh, the, the planet that he was in the trash piles. That's the only thing that kept him alive was his anger for Obi-Wan, and it ended up driving him insane, drove him batshit crazy. Um, so if he's going up against Obi-Wan, there's not going to be nice words said. I, I mean, it's, it's going to be Maul and Obi-Wan kicking ass, hopefully. And, it, and you know Obi-Wan's got to be the one to walk away from it. Now, at the same time, I also feel like if anybody is going to take Maul out, it's got to be Obi-Wan. Because of that, set, because of the said history there between episode, you know, one all the way through Clone Wars, you know, and then now through Rebels, as soon as he saw Obi Wan was alive, he's like, he lives, he lives, and he takes off like just in this blind rage. Um, it, it this is literally a grudge match between Kenobi and Maul. That, that's all it is is a grudge match. Um, and and I, to be honest, I I I don't know how it's gonna play out, but if I were gonna have it play out be this epic light okay like for those of you who have seen like the theatrical release of the clone wars animated movie thing they did which was crap by the way but there was one really cool shot in it when anakin and dooku are fighting on tatooine and you can kind of see them on the sand dunes in the background and it's just their silhouettes and their, and their lightsabers are crossing 
and and you hear this kind of like cool music this like cool like almost arabian music in the background that was freaking awesome i want to see something like that like mall and obi-wan just tearing each other apart um I also saw somebody had the idea, I don't remember who it was, and I wish I could give credit for this. I don't remember who it was, this was not, I didn't come up with this, but I read it somewhere on Facebook. Um, the way Ezra was being tortured by Maul, and seeing him everywhere before Maul actually popped up, um, in like one of the last few episodes, um, what if he tortured Obi-Wan the same way? Like Obi-Wan's looking around and he sees him, and you know, he looks at it twice and he's gone, and stuff like that, and it just haunts him. And I, I mean, I, I, that would be so awesomely cool and then what would be even cooler i don't know i don't know how they would do this i'm gonna have to reread the um obi-wan comics again from the star wars series that trilogy because i don't remember if it was mentioned anywhere i'm gonna have to reread it if if it was let me know in the comments below um i don't know if obi-wan knows anakin is vader yet at this point and if he doesn't i mean how would maul know but still at the same time what if he found out from darth maul that Darth Vader was Anakin Skywalker. I don't know how Anakin or how Maul would even know that. I, I don't know. It's just something that kind of popped into my head. I thought it'd be kind of a cool thing. Um, but anyway, yeah. It, it, God, man, Maul and Obi-Wan, that's going to be a freaking cool episode. I cannot wait. Um, I think we've only got like four or five, six episodes left to go until we get to that one. So, you know, here in the next couple months, we'll have seen it. Oh, God, man, I can't wait. And then um, I guess come... Celebration, we may get a teaser for season four of Rebels. I don't know. Um, from what I've heard, it's been renewed. Uh, but uh, and as far as I'm, uh, as far as I know, I do not know firsthand. But uh, I cannot wait to see what even season four has to hold. So I hope that answered your question, Jay. If not, I'll probably hear about it tomorrow. Uh, but uh, anyway, yeah. So the last question I've got is from Nicholas Paul Nave. Now, if I'm, let me know how to pronounce your last name because I always say it. I don't even know if I'm saying it right. Um, thoughts on Del Toro being named a Fett. Okay, now first off, uh, there's a lot. There's a couple layers to to my answer to this question. Um, number one, this is coming from Mike Zero on YouTube. Now, I'm not knocking Mike Zero. Okay, I'm I'm not gonna do it. Uh, he's a content creator. I'm a content creator. I'm not gonna sit here and run him down. Okay, I'm not I'm not gonna do it. But the fact is, most of the stories that he puts out are clickbait stories and are completely false. Um, now, I'm not saying that he doesn't have a good channel. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying a lot of his stories are clickbait stories, and it's gotten to the point I won't even click on them. Um, but a lot of the stories he, he came out with for Episode 7 weren't true. Um, uh, you know, and a lot of them for Rogue One weren't true. So, um, I, this, he was the first person to report on this. Now, personally, I have nothing against the guy. I've never met him before. I've never even talked to him. But I, as, as of now, I do not consider that a credible source. Um, now, it may be true. It may come out later on down the road that he was right. And I'll eat my words. I will. And, and I'll admit it. I'll be the first person to admit I was wrong and that he was right. Um, and I have nothing against the guy. I just, I, I need to stress that I have nothing against the guy at all. Um, but Del Toro being a Fett, let's say for a second that it is true. I'm not, I'm not big on the idea. Um, when did Boba Fett, I don't like the idea of him being a Fett. Um, it, it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't meld well with, you know, the character of Fett, I mean, in my opinion, um, and and he doesn't have to be. Everybody in Star Wars doesn't have to be related. Not everybody has to be related to a classic character. It just doesn't have to be done, um, you know. And uh, odds are, if I was going to put money on anything, on anything, he's either going to be, and he may be both, for all I know. He's either going to be, and I, I can't believe I'm saying this because I don't want it to be true. He's either going to be Ezra Bridger from Rebels or Ray's father. And he, sh he could be both. Of course, that would mean Ezra was Ray's father, and I don't subscribe to that idea at all. I don't know, I don't know anything about Dotoro's character. 
Um, all I know is what everybody else has been referring to him as a man in black. Um, I Part of me hopes that he's like Hux's father from Aftermath. Um, you know, I just... Uh, <coughs> I don't know. I don't like the idea of him being a fet. I think we need to leave... I mean, because as of now, I, th I was dead certain that Boba Fett had survived the Sarlacc pit after reading Aftermath. And then, well, after reading the first Aftermath. And then when I read the second Aftermath, I'm not so dead certain Fett made it out of the Sarlacc pit. So, just, if he is dead, let that name die with Boba Fett. Don't soil it with somebody else. Um, you know, just with, with a legacy. Don't do that. Um, I just... Excuse me. I just want all these new characters to be new characters. I don't want Snoke to be anybody that we've seen before. I want Snoke to be Snoke. I want him to like. My, I I don't get why everybody has to have everybody else related, and why Finn has to be force sensitive. You know, when we have Ray, which by the way, they've released the the Last Jedi title in other languages, and it's plural. So um, I'm convinced that it's talking about Luke and Ray. Uh, I don't think it's talking about Finn. I got into a good argument, well, not an argument, a debate with somebody uh, uh, last week, I think it was. It was last week uh, on whether or not Finn was force sensitive. But uh, but anyway, I'm, I'm getting off track here. Um, I, I, Del Toro, I just want him to be a, a brand new character um, that we've never heard of before. I mean, never seen before. Uh, we could have heard of him before. Like, I wouldn't mind reading. Uh, having read about him in one of the novels, I didn't realize it. Um, that would be all right with me. Um, I just, I really, I'm sick of everybody being related. Um, I'm, I'm even getting to the point where I don't want Ray's parents to be anybody we've seen before. Um, and, and I'm really, really hoping um, that that is the case. Um, so anyway, I, that, those are my thoughts on Del Toro being fed, uh, being a fed. I just, I don't want to see it. Um, I think the galaxy is a big place. The Star Wars galaxy is a huge place. We can start focusing on other characters. We're not, we're not, we're not stuck with just a group of like 500 characters. Okay, there are billions of beings in the galaxy that we have yet to see, that we have yet to hear about, that we have yet to learn about. There are species in Star Wars that we don't even know about yet. I guarantee you, episodes eight and nine are going to have species that we have never seen before in Star Wars. So, I mean, just expand outward okay don't stay constrained to such a small galaxy just keep it keep giving us new stuff that's what we want um but anyway uh i'm going to leave you guys with uh i'm going to ask you guys a question and i want to know your guys's opinions you can comment below and let me know i will read them i i i, I want to know your guys's opinion on this um richard j messaged me the other day and showed me a paragraph excerpt from Empire's End. Now, this may be a spoiler for some of you, okay? Um, I hope it's not, and if it is, please forgive me. I don't mean to do that to you. Um, but the story's already gone around. I don't know if everybody has seen it. But there's this excerpt from Empire's End where Jar Jar Binks is a street clown playing for scraps. Um... What are your guys' thoughts on that? I want to know what you guys have to say about that. Um, I told Kirsty about it, and she and I told her that Jay messaged me about it, and I'm like scrolling through my messages trying to find the excerpt, and I read it to her, and she goes, are you effing serious? And then just stared into blank space for like two or three full minutes, like contemplating, and I could tell she wasn't there. And then... Finally, it dawned on her. She's like, God, blah, blah. And she, she messages Jay and starts going off on him for telling me this. So uh, what are your guys' thoughts on Jar Jar being the street clown? I don't even know what planet it's on. I don't know what context it's in. I don't know. We're going to find out here in the next few days. Um, but give us give us your thoughts. Let us know. Uh, did you want Jar Jar to be on Alderaan when it blew up like I did? You know, um, just what are your guys' thoughts on Jar Jar being alive? Guys, like I said, if you have any questions or comments you want to let us know, just email us at StarWarsCanonLibrary at gmail.com or you can message us on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash StarWarsCanonLibrary and make sure to visit our website. It is www.StarWarsCanonLibrary.com. I'd sure appreciate it if you guys liked this video. If you did, hit that subscribe button uh, and I'll be having the uh, review for Empire Zen out hopefully in the next couple days, uh, God willing and the Force willing. 
Uh, so guys, until next time, this is Brian signing off from the library and may the force be with you.